Here is a video overview of the Deep V260. There might be a little wind noise, it's blowing a gale here today. It's a very nice looking vessel in above, looking vessel in above. As you can see, the boat's sitting in a C pen. The C pen is in average condition, the tubes are in good condition. Net and liner uh, is generally good, but the rear section of the net does need to be replaced. The boat is certainly in above average condition. The hull is very tidy, as you can see from this high definition video. Gunnels and combings are neat. There's no sort of major bumps or lumps, damage or repair on the boat. There are a couple of small scuff marks, which I'll highlight that are down on the side. These are just from a fender rub or something similar and will come out with a polish. The boat's very tastefully decorated with black window covers, breezeway black covers and bimini. The clears to the flybridge are all in good order. Anchor roll uh, assembly is a custom stainless steel to an electric windlass. An upgraded Rockner anchor, which is 15 kilos, has been fitted. The stainless steel rails are highly polished and seem to be well cared for. On the foredeck, there's a life raft under the black cover. Black co this life raft was last service in 2015, so is effectively out of service currently. There's a Garmin GPS antenna mounted on the brow. Moving further aft, there's a pair of white fiberglass relax game poles. These appear to be the six to six and a half meter version, and they come with the shock cord the stainless mounts and the quick release clips. The cockpit is three quarters, uh, a three quarter Euro awning over the top, which is a canvas or umbrella material, and around that it's fully enclosed with a high quality, what appears to be 90% breezeway shade cloth. This is highly effective in keeping out the bugs, shading the cockpit and stops most rain, uh, unless it's sort of driving rain, with strong winds. There's a magma gas barbecue mounted on the transom midships on a custom stainless steel bracket with its own cover. A small factory fitted swim platform and the tender is currently clipped onto that with weaver clips. The tender is a Tiger Marine soft floor inflatable and it's been fitted with optional swing down rollers to be able to more easily move it around, move it around. Looking up top, you can see that there's a quality bimini on stainless steel frame, not aluminium. Two helm chairs and there's some premium LED deck floods fitted to the top of the bimini. Antennas are fold down, the bimini can fold down, and the game poles are removable for freight. For freight. This is looking across the cockpit. The cockpit is extremely tidy. It's very neat and clean. The floor has a couple of small chips in it where things have been dropped on it, but generally is in above average condition. The upholstery combings, which are fitted all the way around the cockpit, are mostly in good order. There are two small sections of them where there's some slight cracking in the vinyl. One in this area in the starboard aft corner and on the port side adjacent a rod holder and probably damage from a fishing rod. There's a small area there needs replacement. The floors themselves are very good. Hatches are fitted with premium T-handles and the non-skid finish on the boat uh, remains in very good order. All rod holders are fitted with safety lanyards and premium stainless steel clips. There are four rod holders in the cockpit. On the starboard side forward is a premium ladder to the flybridge.
interior on the other side is equally as good. Unmarked windows, unmarked upholstery, there's no scratches on the table, it's all in really, really good condition. The carpet is the striped stuff that comes from PNN flooring at Yattler in Queensland, hard wearing and used around the world. The fridge is stainless steel. Often we see these with rust in the doors, rust on the hinges and the interior is marked. This one is in outstanding condition. It's an isotherm which is the premium brand in 12 volt fridges. 12 volt. Toilet and shower also neat and tidy. It's been upgraded with an aftermarket handset and uh, a better tap arrangement as well as uh, what you would call better quality toothbrush holder. The toilet is a TMC style electric. It's not terrible. It's not terrible. As a Pioneer stereo system. Interesting feature of this boat is all of the lockers under the upholstery have had hinged lids put on it that are lockable because the cabin isn't locked with the soft rear wall they've added security so that anything internally can be locked properly underneath this cupboard is batteries and the two chargers standing at the top of the stairs there's rocket launchers for five rods covers for the helm seats covers for the helm itself there are some marks on the floor I'll zoom down to a couple of those now these have been filled with what looks to be gel coat or epoxy there's about uh, eight or ten of those I'd say they were clips where some previous floor fittings is floor fit I've removed one of the seat covers both seats are the same they're effectively brand new premium helm chairs with padded arms aluminium frames and the view back to the companionway companionway here's the view looking forward from the driver's helm chair working from left to right there's a horizon which is a Marantz VHF system has a power mic downstairs the Volvo electronic engine management system that's the one underneath this cover here a fume detector for carbon monoxide and the Volvo Penta secured ignition start and stop center system. There's a Ritchie helm compass and on the right the top panel is for the uh, EDC trim or QL trim tab controllers, the Muir electric winch, Lumar bow thruster and then the Volvo full electronic controls. The wheel itself is hydraulic steering and it has facility for single hand use. The 600 watt transducer for the sounder and GPS are displayed on a Garmin 5012 LCD high definition display. As you can see from the optical quality the clears up here are in very good condition. This one's got a little bit of cloudiness on it but that would be from the several storms we've had lately. Generally they're in very good condition as is the bimini and the stainless steel frame. The acrylic uh, which lines the windscreen has no cracks in it. There's some tape over where the two parts join but generally these uh, we see a number of them that are cracked or crazed. This one's in above average condition. Above. Here we are with the engine hatch up. This is the Volvo D4 260 which many think is the ideal engine for this boat. Most of these came out with 5.7 petrol engines. They just lack the torque to get up and going because it's a reasonably heavy boat to get the outstanding ride and handling. They're about 4 to 4.5 tonnes. I'm aware of a couple of these had the D6 350s in. They give more speed but they suffer from being a lot heavier. These are considered the ideal. As you consider the condition is just excellent. It's been very excellent. It's been very this is looking from the port side to the top of the engine. It's very neat and tidy. It seems to be completely dry. There's no evident oil leaks, no cooling leaks. The bilge itself is dry. You'll see there's storage down there with a bracket for the mercury outboard. The bilge pump's high and dry.